happens to have cottages on lakes and parcels of land that will be affected by this uh, by this land claim. So, Terry. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Greg, and thanks all of you for coming out. It's uh, uh, quite telling that there's so many of you here, and it's obviously a important matter of public policy, and it affects so many of us that. Uh, the full room is really indicative of, uh, of the interest in the, in the issue here. I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a background about why we're here, why we're interested, and, and why it's important that our members uh, know more about this process because, as you've heard from the previous two speakers, we don't think there's been a whole lot of discussion about this with people who are going to be impacted. That's the public and all of you. And we think as, a as an organization it's important we do our part on behalf of our members we are members of the State uh, Committee of External Stakeholders, as they've called us, but uh, that's sort of in name only, as you've, as you've heard, consultation-wise. Uh, so we think it's important that each of you and any of you that we can reach through our respective organizations that you know what we know and ask some of the important questions. So we've been around about 50 years. We've got member associations from Cornwall to Kenora. This is our mission, so we're all about trying to protect a thriving and uh, sustainable future for our waterfront communities. So we do this a couple of different ways, like this, talking to people who are interested and are, care to come out and are, and are keen about issues, to educate people where they don't, uh, might not know, and, and through our government relations activities and trying to speak uh, on their behalf, on behalf of issues that impact our communities. We've got a volunteer board of directors that represent our associations across the province. Again, 500 plus member associations. Sorry, we can't hear you back here. Do you want me to start again? We've got 500. Sorry about that. We've got 500 member associations that represent 50,000 paying member families, and that's out of a community of about 250,000 people that own waterfront property across Ontario. So in this area alone, we are. Constituency, that's water, residential waterfront property owners own about 2,000 kilometers of shoreland and about 17,000 acres of environmentally important land. So important stakeholders, so we do our part to make sure they're doing what they need to do and making sure that as part of the, part of the interests on the, on the landscape, we do our part and we're participatory in the decisions that impact the resource. We own about 10 billion in this region. We own about 10 billion dollars worth of residential real estate, and pay every year to the local municipalities about 80 million dollars in property taxes. So it's important to us what happens in the neighborhood, and whether it's an economic development opportunity or something that happens uh, from competing or different land uses, uh, we're interested. So we try to act as an information bridge, and we try and share information as best we can. We're on this committee of stakeholders, but we have had precious little to share with our members until this AIP was released, and even now the detail is, is uh, we feel, is uh, pretty minimal. So that's why we're here to encourage you, as you've heard, to ask the questions that you need to know to have an informed opinion about this. It's not just the Algonquin land claim where we pony up and stand up. We work on things like the Minister's Mining Advisory Council to talk about how mining interests inter intersect with uh, residential properties and how they impact the landscape. We work with the province, we're with, on the rural working group on the provincial policy statement, trying to help them articulate what the province's uh, policies are and what their overarching policies are around land use planning, because land use planning is uh, near and dear to our hearts in terms of what happens on the landscape, what, what are appropriate land, uh, land uses in what areas. So we just want to be part of the process and that's what we're all about. So we do a lot of this kind of, we're on the road a lot, we, uh, as, a members, as members of the Ontario uh, Biodiversity Council, we talk to a lot of people like we were here in uh, Huntsville uh, last summer to talk about biodiversity, encouraging people to get uh, do what they can on their landscapes about biodiversity. We're champions for long-term science in Canada because the Experimental Lakes area is an important piece of uh, research. Uh, that's gone on for 40 years that we're hoping won't get lost as part of this uh, recent federal budget. We talk about important things like fire safety on the landscape and work with collegial groups from across the province and the country to do, to do this kind of uh, important lobbying. 
some of you would have been lucky enough to show up at the lake when it looked like this and you were the only person there, but uh, you know, the, the point being that a lot of us appreciate this beautiful province because we can have low density, healthy, thriving, sustainable rural communities. And we've got tons of beautiful lakes and it's up to all of us. We have a responsibility, that's the public and also the people that we elect to help us maintain this kind of uh, experience for our grandkids. The scenario where we carve up the landscape into ever ever smaller bits and overdevelop, which is developing in marginal lands, cutting up fish and wildlife habitats, spawning marginal lands where wildlife move, we think that there's got to be something between pristine landscape where there's no one on it, and we consider this landscape a place where we have the right to live and exist and recreate, but it's also our obligation to do it in a mindful way. So whether, you might not be able to see this, but this is in Muskoka, by the way, maybe a big resort on the water is the right thing to do. Maybe that's a good economic opportunity, but in any case, it's a matter of a public conversation before we decide whether this is the kind of economic activity that we think is appropriate on a given lake or in a given neighborhood. What we really want to do here today is to encourage anyone that we have a chance to talk to, that's all of you and the people that we talk to through our website, through our e email blasts and elsewhere, that you need to understand exactly what's at issue here. You can do that here tonight since you're here to look at the maps for your respective areas to see which parcels are near you that you might use, that your family might have an interest in, and again, that may, might be because you own property there, it might be because you can fish, hunt, canoe, and make sure that you understand exactly which parcels are, are uh, up for discussion. You should understand exactly what they think is on that property. We've already heard at the previous meetings we've held in Stittsville and in Perth that we had people put their hand up and say, I, there's a parcel right near me and it's a piece of crown land and it's, it's uh, everyone understands that that's a public piece of land, but there's all kinds of stuff goes on there. And did, did the province know that that was where all the people came from town. That's where all the teenagers hang out. That's the camping site. I don't know that, but it's important if you've got an interest in one of these parcels that you understand what the province knows is going on there or thinks they know what's going on, know what's going on there because they've missed the opportunity for all the local knowledge that all of you have about these parcels so that they can make an informed decision about where and where and what, what parcels and, and uh, are at, uh, up for discussion here. It's also important because our municipalities are key partners. We've got member associations in 386 municipalities in this province. We are always encouraging our member associations, hey, you got to be part of the, pro the municipalities where the rubber hits the road. Land use planning is a, is a municipal uh, responsibility. Who strikes municipal uh, official plans and bylaws that relate to land use planning is a matter for the municipality. So it's important to everyone that owns property in a municipality that's in this land use claim area, you understand where your municipality was at when they had the discussions, how they decided which properties were excluded, would be excluded from the land claim discussions, and which ones would be eligible. <coughs> when you do land use planning, and you do maps, you do bylaws, you determine what kind of zoning happens in a certain area, whether it's residential, whether it's high density, whether it would be commercial. What kind of access is there, services, what kind of infrastructure is required or is already there? Those are important discussions. Well, we have our mem we badger our members to get involved in those discussions when you're talking about plans of subdivision on one little lake or maybe a new lot creation. So what we think as an organization that when you're talking about 117,000 acres, which is going to be transferred from ownership of the Crown to private ownership, that's a fairly significant public policy discussion where the public needs a chance to weigh in. And that's why we're encouraging all of our members in each one of the municipalities that are affected, you have that conversation with the municipality. I know that some municipalities entered in the secret agreement with MNR to talk about what lands might be up for, uh, might be eligible. You should talk to your municipality about what lands, what the process looked like and how they uh, decided on the lands that uh, ended up in the agreement. 
like our uh, colleagues, we encourage you to talk to our political leaders because ultimately this is a political discussion and we need to make sure that your interests are represented and that they hear from you. The Algonquin Land Claim.ca site that OFH has created is great. It'll give you most everything you need to know, and I think they're planning to update it uh, as we go along here. Our website, which is www.foca.on.ca, has also got information on all manner of things related to what we do, and has specific pages related to the Algonquin Land Claim as well. Uh, you can search the site uh, for anything from the claim to property taxation, hydro rates, or septic systems, whatever, you, whatever is your pleasure. But I encourage you in any case to make sure you understand what this claim means to you. Make sure you contribute your knowledge for your local neighborhood. Make sure the people that you talk to about how you envision your neighborhood developing understand where you're coming from so we can make this process live up to the kind of ideals that I think have been put before us, which is really a, a conversation where everyone gets a chance to have their, have their say. We can have good land use planning and good decision making in this country, but it takes everyone to come to the table. So if all of us can stand up and do that, then it's up to it's up to our political leadership to do likewise. And so I appreciate your attention and anything you can do to make sure you're weighing in on the conversation and for your attention tonight. So thanks very much.